You always have read or heard about macros, but never understood exactly what they are and what you can do with them. Or maybe you have always resisted learning more about them because you think macros are complicated and only for programmers? Or you would like to learn how to work with macros, but just don't know where to start? Then this video is for you. I'm Lukas Ruschitzka and today I'd like to talk about everything you need to know about macros in Studio One. The Studio One Macro Toolbar is the ultimate workflow power feature, so let me show you why. What is a macro? A macro is basically a list of Studio One commands. What is a command? Well, basically everything you have a menu item or a toolbar button for is a command. Let's say you're editing a certain part in your song and you want to play your selection as a loop over and over again. To do so, you have to select your event, then choose transport and then loop selection. Now your loop range is set to this exact selection. Then you need to activate the loop and then finally you set the cursor to the loop start and press play. If you often need to play your current selection in a loop, then this is the perfect reason to make this a macro. This means you don't need to do all of this step by step anymore, you just hit your macro and all these commands are triggered one after the other. So let's start. This icon here will open up the macro toolbar. And the macro toolbar is a custom toolbar that lets you add your own buttons or groups of buttons. As you can see, there are a couple of already existing macros and buttons that are ready to use, but for now let's focus on creating our own macro pages. So let's right click here on this page list and let's say new page. Now we have a new empty macro page and let's again right click here and in this menu you can double click the page title and just rename it. So let's call it my first macro page. And again right click and say new group because before you can add buttons you need at least one group. And now you can just right click here in the group or you can also left click the group header and now let's add a new button. So here is our button, but of course nothing happens when you click it. Sure, because we didn't assign a command or macro to it. And here is the first interesting thing about macro buttons. You can assign any command in Studio One to a button in the macro toolbar. Just right click the button, go to assign and click assign command. And now we get a list of all commands that we have in Studio One. And with this nice search field, we can look for the command we'd like to have, for instance, split at cursor. And as soon as I hit OK, the button automatically gets the name of this command. And now you just need to click on the button to split our events here. And you could also rename the button just to have it a bit more compact. Let's call it just split. So this means even if you don't use macros at all, you can use the macro toolbar to create a custom view with your favorite commands. Let's say you often need the plugin manager, but you don't want to open the view menu first, then go all the way down to plugin manager. No, you can just put that on a button, just right click, make a new button, go to assign command, enter plug, and just double click plugin manager. And here's the button, always there if you need it. So again, you can use the macro toolbar just as a way to add buttons for your favorite commands. But the real power shows up when we now don't just put a single command on a button, but a list of commands. And that's where we come back to our loop selection from earlier. First, we want to set our loop range to the current selection. The command for this is in the transport menu and it's called loop selection. So let's create a new button. And now we don't choose assign command, but we want to create a new macro, so click here. And this opens the macro editor. It's the window where we can design our macro. On the left, we have the list of all the commands that we can use in our macro. And on the right, there's the list of our macro. And it's empty so far. Let's change this and look for loop selection. Here it is. Now I double click this command 
And you're gonna see this command is now added to the macro. Now let's think about the next step we need to do. Once the loop range is set, we need to turn the loop on. And the command for this is toggle loop. Here it is, so double click it to add it to our macro. And there's only one more step we need in our macro and this is play from loop start. Okay, so you see there are now three commands in our macro list and what Studio One does when we run this macro, it will run the first command, then go to the next command and then go to the next command and so on. So it just runs all the commands in our list. Nothing more than that is a macro. But there's one thing that is still missing and that we need to change. This toggle loop command does exactly what it says, it toggles. So if the loop is turned off, it will turn it on. And if it's on, it will turn it off. But for this macro to work, we need to make sure that it always turns it on. And this is where arguments come into play. Many of the commands in Studio One that are called toggle, toggle anything, toggle snap or toggle band markers, all these commands have an argument called state. And you can see this here in the list where it says arguments. And this means that you can double click the command and it will open up a little window where you can enter a state. If you leave this text field for the state empty, then it will just toggle the current loop state. If we want to turn it off, then we need to enter zero. If we want to turn loop on, then we type in one. And that's what we actually want. So let's go out of this window. And as you can see it here in the list, the state argument is one. And this is basically the only thing that might be a little confusing for people that haven't worked with something like that, but it's actually quite easy to understand. Studio One runs the toggle loop command and if the state is zero, it will turn it off. And if the state is one, it will turn it on. And if the state is empty, it will just toggle. Now it still needs a name, play selection in loop. So let's try this out. And it works. It sets the loop range, turns loop on and plays our selection from the start. That's really cool. And you can press it over and over again to restart our loop. Now let's try out another thing we can do with macros. Maybe you often need to create a fade in and fade out of an audio event with a certain length. Of course, you can track the fade in handle and try to set it to about one second. Now drag the right fade handle and again one second. Well, we can create a macro for that so that we can do the same thing with just one click. So let's add one more button, right click, new macro, and we're gonna look for auto fade, create auto fades, that's it. And now you'll probably see that the create auto fades command has a length argument. You might already guess what it does. I double click and enter one because the length is a number in seconds and I want my fade to be exactly one second. You could also enter 1.5 or any other value in this text field. Okay, that's it. Let's name it auto fade one sec. And here's the button. Just press it and it automatically sets our fade in and fade out to one second. And this is the second thing that's great about macros. They are not only for running multiple commands in a row, you can also use them to run just one command, but with a certain argument, like in this example, with auto fade and the one second length. And this is very, very powerful because it means you can create your own presets for certain commands. Let me show you another example. In this song, I have my drums, bass, the keyboards and vocals. For editing, I'd like to focus on the drums. So I want to see only the drums. Of course, I could open the track list and enter drums into the search field to filter these tracks. But let's have a macro do this for us. New button, new macro. The command is called filter tracks. Then double click the command and enter drums as our filter text. And I call it show drums. And now I have a button that shows me only the tracks that have something with drums in their name. Very, very handy. What if I like to have some more similar macros? Is there a quicker way to create more buttons for show vocals, show keys and so on? Yes, there is. Right click a button and click duplicate macro. 
This creates a copy of both our macro and the button. So I can now right click and say edit macro. And here I just change the argument and instead of drums I'm gonna type in vocals. Let's change it here as well. Now Studio One asks me if I want to rename the macro file as well. Yes, I want to. Now I also need to rename the button. And let me quickly add another button for the keys. Here we are. This was really easy to do and now I have three buttons and I can switch between just the drums, the vocals, the keys and let me just add one more button and assign it directly to show all tracks. So we can go back to see all tracks in our song. Pretty cool and I use this myself very often. By the way, the assign commands window shows us both commands as well as macros. So you can use it to search macros you have already created and assign these to our buttons. You can even just enter macros and Studio One is going to show us all the macros, both our own macros, but also the macros that already come with Studio One. By the way, macros can be run not only through a button on the toolbar, you can also assign them to keyboard shortcuts, just as any other Studio One command. We just need to go into the keyboard shortcuts window and here we can enter one of our macros and assign it to a hotkey. And you can also run macros with buttons on your MIDI controller. And I've made a whole video about it, which is now linked at the top right corner. So if you're interested in how you can use your MIDI controller to trigger macros, take a look at this video. But now let's take a look at some more ways to customize our own macro toolbars. In the beginning, I've shown you that you can have different groups on one macro page. In our case, it would make sense to have a separate group for track visibility. So let's click here on the group and say new group. And let's call it show tracks. Don't forget to double click in order to rename it. And what we can do now is just hold down control, that's command on Mac. And now while holding down this key, I can move the buttons. I can move them inside the group, but I can also drag it to a different group. And now we have our separate show tracks group where we can show drums, vocals, keys or all of our tracks. And you can also move your group again by holding down control or command. So this is a great way to keep your macro pages clean and structured and just the way you like it. And if your toolbar has grown so much that there is no more room for more buttons, you can also move an entire group to a different page. So you would create an empty page first and then click the group and say move to and then select the new page. So you can really customize these pages and buttons to your liking. If you want, you can even make your own icons for your buttons. Just go to icon, select image and select an image. For example, the cover picture from the horror movie The Nun is a perfect icon for our split button. And if we like, we can remove the text now because when we see the nun, we're probably gonna know that this is the split button. No, joking aside, if you want to know what command your buttons are assigned to, just hover over one of these buttons and you will get a small tooltip with the exact name of the command or the macro that's assigned to this button. One more thing you can do with your own toolbars is you can create menus. Right click and instead of new button, click new menu button. And here you can right click and say edit menu. And this lets us create an entirely new menu with several items, with separators and even with submenus and more items in this submenu and so forth. And then if you click the menu button, it will open these custom menus. So if you have so many buttons on your page so that there's no place for more groups or buttons, you can also have them in submenus. You might be wondering how you can get an overview of all your custom macros you've created. For this, we have the macro organizer and you'll be able to access it when you click here at the little cogwheel icon 
and then choose Macro Organizer. This shows you all Studio One macros that are on your system and they are sorted by groups. Here you can add new macros or edit existing macros. Or of course, you can also delete macros that you don't need anymore. Before we finally take a look at the factory macro toolbars, let me show you how you can export your custom macro pages. Go to the list of the toolbar pages, right click and choose export. Now we can enter a name or let's just take this name and save it. This macro page file contains the whole page with all the groups and buttons and very important to know, it also contains the custom macros assigned to these buttons. So if you have created your own macros and assigned them to the buttons and you send this exported macro page to a friend or copy it to another computer, this macro page can be imported here right at the same place, right click and choose import. And all the macros will then be available on the other computer as well. So I really recommend you, if you've put a lot of effort into your custom macro page, export it simply to have a backup of it. And maybe you also want to share it with others. For example, by uploading it to Presonus Exchange. Now let's have a look at the factory macro pages that already come with Studio One. So even if you don't want to create your own macros, there's a ton of really useful macro pages already available and ready to use. We have a global macro page with buttons for zoom or split or different selections. Or we have the music editing toolbar that I had the honor to contribute to Studio One. So this will already show up in your list. And here is another feature because there's not only one macro toolbar here in the arrangement window, but also another macro toolbar in the note editor. The pages in the list are the same, but you can select different pages. So in my case, I'd like to have the global macro page in my arrangement view and the music editing page in the note editor. And here in this toolbar, we have many different menus for all kinds of note editing tasks. For example, you can select notes, select only highest or lowest notes, select from one note to the end, you can transpose notes or set all notes to the same pitch. You can select your notes and set them to certain lengths or velocities. Or you can quantize these notes. So you have really a bunch of different functions here. And as you already might have guessed, these are just different commands with a certain argument I've set. For example, for the note lengths, I have just used the length command and set my options to set all and quarter notes. So all this is possible with macros. And then you have a music creation page that is really, really underrated, I guess, because it basically lets you create all kinds of patterns in different scales, randomize them and so on. I've made a whole video about this randomized toolbar and my friend Gregor also shows this in some of his videos. So make sure to check them out. And here's one final thing. There are also a bunch of other macro pages online on Presonus Exchange. You can find them when you go to the browser, then select the Cloud tab, then select Presonus Exchange and then Macro Pages. And here are many macro pages that other Studio One users have created and uploaded to the cloud. So you can browse these different folders and if you found a macro page that seems interesting to you, you just click install and it will immediately appear in your macro toolbar. So this was my Studio One macro tutorial. I hope this helped you to get started with macros or just to show you some examples why it's really worth to get into the topic and create your own custom macros or custom macro pages. Please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you like this kind of tutorials. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.